guys, my name is Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things and today I'm gonna talk to you about reading nonfiction. Before you click off this video, I want to make something really clear. Nonfiction reading is a lot more broad than what people think. Nonfiction reading does not just involve you reading a textbook for school and I have been fortunate enough that I follow a lot of people that read nonfiction, including the incredible who got me into this genre after I had forgotten it for so long. But let's say you are new to nonfiction like I was relatively relatively soon ago. That doesn't make sense. I teach English. So let's just say that you are I have not ever read a nonfiction book, but you are kind of curious to start reading nonfiction books. And this is what this video is about. For you reader out there that don't know where to begin, but have an inkling or maybe a curiosity to quench about nonfiction. The first thing that you need to know is that nonfiction is just as varied as fiction. There are so so many subgenres of nonfiction. And of course, the books that I'm going to recommend for you to start with are going to be books that talk to my heart <laughs> when it comes to nonfiction, but maybe those are not the books that talk to your heart. The other thing I want to point out is that nonfiction can be written in a way where it almost seems like it's a fiction book. What I mean by this is that it doesn't have to be written like a textbook, it doesn't have to be written in a boring manner. In fact, what I have found is that a lot of nonfiction reads like a fiction. So with that said, let's get into not the books that I would recommend, but first how you would approach nonfiction as a nonfiction reader and how you would find the right book for you. So the first thing that I'm going to say is find TV shows that you like. I know this sounds strange and I know that you would think that I would recommend to find books that you like that are in fiction and then try to extrapolate that into nonfiction. But the reality is if you like fantasy, I mean, there's not much I can do with you. <laughs> there's not much I can say to you there. But if you like The Crown, if you do like Downton Abbey, if you like, I don't know, Peaky Blinders, then that is a way for us to figure out what you like. Maybe you like serial killer documentaries. Well, there you go. There are plenty, plenty of books about serial killers, which by the way, inspired those documentaries. So that's a thing, like that's a tie-in, you know? So instead of trying to find books that you like, find TV shows that you enjoy and then try to see how you can bring that in into nonfiction reading. The other thing I want to recommend for you is if you like animals, try reading books based around animals within nonfiction. This is actually how I got into nonfiction and you're going to see in my small nonfiction collection that I have a very clear like view of what I like when it comes to nonfiction. Now I'm not a big biography reader, I really am not because I don't I don't enjoy the idea of reading a book about a single person and then throughout their whole life. But if you're a big fan of that kind of like Game of Thrones, um, fantasy books that are longer and that tell you the story of someone and how from little they get to a lot or you know, and if you like tragic tales, because let me tell you, a lot of them are tragic, then pick up a biography pick up a biography of somebody who you really admire and in that vein if you really like actors if you like the like the the career of acting or or directing or if there's somebody you really admire see if there's a biography out there about this person or written by this person that you admire i know that jonathan van ness from queer eye has his book out and I believe it's a biographical book or just a book about him in general. So if you like Queer Eye and you enjoy 
Jonathan Van Ness, then that is a great way for you to get into nonfiction and to read something that you enjoy because let's all remember what Monica always says, reading is not a competitive sport, it is a hobby for enjoyment. With that being said, over here I have my very small collection of nonfiction books and out of these I'm going to recommend a couple of them just in case you want somewhere to start with. You know what? I'm gonna recommend all of these books because there's not that many of them and I'm gonna go in the order that I actually read them chronologically throughout my life. And we're gonna start with one of the first nonfiction, no, the very first nonfiction book I ever read when I was just, I believe, nine years old. And that is Born Free by jo Joy Adamson. And this is the story of a woman and a man, well, a, a couple, they live in Africa. I believe they are scientists. And one day a lion gets killed and they find that it was actually a lioness that was protecting her cubs. So they are now left with three little cubs and they don't want them to die. And this is actually the story of how Joy Adamson raises these cubs and then releases them back into the wild. And as somebody who loves animals, this was one of the first times that I really got to see the relationship of a wild animal with a person and how we believe wild animals cannot ever ever coexist and I believe that. I am not I am not saying that you should have a lion as a pet. But the the way Joy Adams the Adamson sorry writes about this, these lions makes you feel, I don't know how to explain it, but that they are so much more than this evil creature that eats other creatures, the king of the jungle, and how there is a sweetness to them that we really ignore within the whole world in general. And that's something we're going to see within scientific writing, actually, in all of these books that they try to not humanize these animals, but to remind us that just because something is not human doesn't make it not sentient. I recommend this as a first entry into also nature me memoirs because this is a really good nature memoir. And if I could read it at nine years old, you can definitely read it. And I like this book also. A lot of these have pictures and there's something so special about being able to see. Oh, I can't see. I don't know if you're going to see with the glare. There you go. See the thing that you're reading about. How many times do we look for fan fiction online of the books that we love? You have it here. There's pictures in it. So... I really love this book. I actually had this book and it got really, really, really damaged in Venezuela when there was a flood and I actually bought another copy just so that I could have it. Oh, I, I, I get emotional thinking about it because I'm a very big animal lover and this book was one of the like pillars of me learning to appreciate animals, learning to appreciate wild animals and how wild animals belong in the wild as a child. And I would recommend it for anyone of any age to read. There's nothing graphic, there's nothing gory. In fact, it's a very, very touching and beautiful story. I think so many times humans ask ourselves the question, are we alone in the universe? And then we kind of forget that we're not even alone within our own world. So. I hope this book brings that joy that it brought to me to you and it's a great way to start with nature memoirs if you're interested in animals and I will warn you there's more um, of these kinds of books here because again I love animals and I love nature and I love na nature memoirs and stuff like that so yeah this is book number one <laughs> I like it because I kind of have a little bit of everything here that's why I decided to um, speak about all of the books that I have in my little nonfiction section. So the second book that I'm going to recommend, I'm going to put a little bit of a warning here because it does talk about viruses. So if you're very sensitive to what's going on in the world right now, I'm going to put a timestamp down here of when you can skip to so that you don't hear about viruses or anything like that. 
but uh, how do I how do I even begin? Okay, so the book is called The Hot Zone by Richard Preston, and I think this is a TV show now. Is it by HBO? It's probably by HBO. But anyway, The Hot Zone is the terrifying true story of the discovery of the Ebola virus, and it is what started me on a journey of one of my biggest hobbies is studying viruses for fun. I'm a nerd. <laughs> I'm sorry. But even though I am 100% a humanities girl, I actually took a bunch of infectious diseases courses in the university as my, what are those called, extra credits because I want it. And this is the book that started it all. This book reads like a story and I'm pretty sure there were some like liberties taken to make it more interesting. But it basically, yeah, it tells the story of the Ebola virus and its discovery and the first outbreak of it. And it's actually not that scary. Like, I don't think this is something that you can't read right now, but I do think this is very accessible to anybody that wants to start reading scientific-based books because it reads more like a story instead of just like a med medical textbook. So... I really recommend it. It's really great fun. And I actually had this as a signed reading for biology when I think I was in the 10th grade. I don't remember. So it's very accessible, very easy to read, and it teaches you a lot. And also, it's if anybody here is like into zombies, <laughs> this is the book for you. And if you read it and you're into zombies, let me know. If you agree with me, because this, I remember when I finished this, I was like, oh, a zombie apocalypse is totally possible. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it made me feel that way. So yeah, The Hot Zone by Richard Preston. Really good book. The next book I have here is another animal book, uh, nature memoir. And it's another, It's this is like probably the most famous book on this little stack of books that I have. And it is, Gorillas in the Mist by Diane Fossey. Again, this book, I'm gonna get emotional. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get really emotional. This book really cemented the fact that animals and humans are only different in the ways that don't matter, not in the ways that matter. And if you love animals, this is such an interesting tale about family and about love and in the ways that you don't expect because gorillas are such a scary figure for us you know you think of the big silver backs and you think of their strength and and you think of their their aggression and you never stop to think about their humility their patience and their love and this book talks about that and it also has set, it, it's it's written by Diane Fossey who sadly died while she was studying gorillas but it also it just she's so funny she's so funny and and she's so like she reminds me of I don't know she reminds me of your sassy aunt that's gonna tell you shit how it is you know and she tells such interesting stories about how she got through customs and how she was almost detained at the Congo and it's it's a fun book until the end. I'm gonna be honest, I've only read this book one time all the way through because it destroyed me because it also talks about, it, it makes mention of the hunting of gorillas and um, that was really hard for me to read so yeah but it's a beautiful memoir. It's also witty. It's funny. Diane Fossey is amazing. And I recommend you read this. Everyone should read this. Everyone should read this. Because I think it opens your heart up a lot. And I know that maybe you're not as emotional as me and this is, this is not your thing. But if you really love animals, I, I can't recommend a better book than this. <laughs> well, no, I actually can and we'll get to it in a second. <laughs> I know I said I was gonna do this chronologically, but since I got into the animals things and I have two more animal books, I'm gonna recommend them. These are the latest books that I read on animal and nature-based memoirs. I think I really think that that's how these are called, but they're not, I'm sorry. And I'm gonna start with Spying on Whales. If you saw my wrap-up, 
about uh, my March wrap up, which I'll link in the cards and down below, you know that this book is incredible. Now this book, this book talks more, less about the whales themselves and more about the study of whales. So if what you're interested in is more of like scientific study, then this book definitely, definitely is for you. Now I will say that, what are my neighbors doing? They're really not taking this quarantine well. Now I will say this book does get a little bit too scientific at points and what I mean about that is that there were chapters that were talking about technical terms and things that really I wasn't interested in. That's why I put the rating down a little bit lower than five stars. But I love how this book explains how we study whales and how it truly is a labor of love and how fucking little we know about whales. Like we know nothing about whales and honestly most of what we know is because we almost destroyed all of the species and also it talks about the future of whales and it's got also it's got amazing illustrations in it it's, it's so beautiful i can't even and also nick Pineson is an amazing writer he is also really witty he reminds me of diane fossey and the fact that he cracks jokes and he like really makes you feel like he's a character in a book who is studying whales like it, it almost feels like a fiction book instead of a, a non-fiction so that's why i think that this is a great book if you want to get into scientific memoirs this is definitely one for you and now we get to the latest non-fiction book that i've read about animals and that is the soul of an octopus by simon montgomery and I, again, I get emotional thinking about this because once again, we get to the fact that even scientists today in like, when was this written? I think this is in 2015 are still scared to publish anything that even like hints at the idea that animals are sentient and that they possess intelligence that can equate to humans and that they possess emotions. Even today, scientists are scared to publish that because they're scared to, of being laughed at, of being the laughing stock of the scientific world. But Simon Montgomery puts the finger up at that and she talks about octopuses. Octopuses, I learned that it's octopuses, not octopi octopuses in a way that is so touching and so beautiful and how different people feel different ways there is a, a, a not i was gonna say a character there is a person in this book with autism and their relationship with the octopus in the octopus that you know that they get to meet is beautiful and i have a fear of fish which i can never pronounce so here you go the name is here and sometimes this book got a little bit scary for me because of this description of the fish and even then i still kept reading because even though i, I phobias are irrational and i know that they're irrational and i the more i read the more i kind of wanted to see a fish and if, if you've never met somebody with a phobia the fact that a book can get you to like want to face your phobia that says a lot about the book this book is written beautifully i love that simon montgomery basically does not shy away from being emotional about animals and they say they, they write about what it's like to feel lost when, when an, an animal you love dies and, and what it's like to grow attached to an animal that is not a dog or a cat, which is what we're used to. They don't shy away from that. On the contrary, it, they embrace it. And that to me is so important. And again, the language here is very easy to read. This is not a difficult book. This is a book that if you've read any book ever, you can read this book. If you really want to get into nature memoirs, I think that this along with Born Free should probably be one of the first ones that you read. Let's 
get done with this one. And this is a book that I read and I have reread and I read it in the university as a sign reading. And if you, if you want to ever write a book, if you have thought to yourself, you have it in you to write a book, but you're scared and you don't know how to, let Stephen King show you. I'm not a big fan of Stephen King. I know he's kind of a controversial person right now, but I cannot do this video without recommending this book. This book uh, in Spanish, I have it in Spanish because it was a sign reading when I was in the university in Venezuela. So it's Mientras Escribo. I'll, I'll insert here the name of the book in English along with the cover. And this book is not a how-to of how to write books. This book just is Stephen King explaining the process he went through when writing books. And it's the most inspirational book about writing that I personally have ever read. And it talks about how writing, we see it as like some magical process of, oh my God, I have this perfect story. And you see like in your head, somebody up until midnight writing and into the morning, and then they have this wonderful spread out book in front of them and it becomes a bestseller. And that's all bullshit. And Stephen King talks about that. And he does it in a way that I have like, I, I know Stephen King's books, like his fiction books. And yet this is probably my favorite of his books because his personality is sarcastic, is funny, is honest. And the last line of this book will stay with you for the rest of your life, or at least it has stayed with me for mine. I remember I read it and I started crying and it was the first time that I actually thought to myself, I can do this, I can write a book. And that was how I wrote my first book. It has never seen the light of day. I doubt it ever will, but I did it. And it was thanks to this book. And it, it's just written in such a smart, funny way. Uh, I have it annotated, I have it dog-eared. I cannot recommend this enough. If you wanted to start like, dipping your toes into biographies this is a great way to do it and if you want to write and are scared to read this book he's gonna help you he's gonna take your hand and he's gonna teach you how to write by teaching you that it's okay to be scared to write okay <laughs> i don't know i i'm so happy talking about these books i'm so happy talking about nonfiction. so here you go um, Mientras Escribo by Stephen King. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the, the English title and I'm pretty sure, I think it's On Writing. Yeah, On Writing by Stephen King. So now we're gonna get into medical books. Medical books are not my thing, but this book came highly recommended. And um, if you saw my previous video, which is my book to movie, <laughs> no, it's, what is it called? <laughs> I always forget my own video name. It's the book to movie uh, blind date project, exactly. Book uh, book to movie blind date project, and that is uh, Brain on Fire by Susanna Callan. This book is incredible. This book is amazing. This book is the story of a woman who has her life together and then suddenly she starts having seizures and she starts getting like psychosis syndrome symptoms and she gets put in an epileptic ward and nobody can guess like even begin to understand what's wrong with her. But what's really interesting about this book is that it paints doctors and patients in the most human real way possible we are so quick to judge these people especially doctors we're like oh my gosh they don't have time they don't even spend time talking to you this book discusses that and this book makes you think about how many people get through the cracks of the system that we're in that is definitely not working and also makes you think that the injustice of the medical system and how we talk about oncology, psychiatry, endocrinology, whatever, as separates. And this book asks the question if by doing that, we're doing a disservice to patients. And I love that. I love this book. This book really took me on a ride because I went through something similar as the, the main character in this book. Um, and 
I was lucky enough to not fall through the cracks in the system just as she was. It was actually a very hard read for me because it brought me back a lot of memories. But at the same time, it, it reminded me that we still have a lot of work to do when it comes to medicine. And that I'm so thankful that there are doctors out there that are doing the hard work. And if you want to get into medical uh, reading, this one is also a good one because again, even though it does get a little bit technical at times with the names and stuff like that, and, and it does show, it doesn't, it doesn't have pictures of anything like I would think is gross or anything like that, but it's a great view of the medical field at this time and how horrible it is to realize that doctors are human too and sometimes they don't have an answer and it's incredible although fair warning if you're a hypochondriac do not read this book again i say this every time i mention this book if you're a hypochondriac this is not the book for you okay don't read medical books if you're a hypochondriac it's it's, it's just not gonna be helpful for you <laughs> okay and finally let's talk about the crown because I fucking love the crown and I love anything to do with royalty and I love historical romance and I love historical fiction so I've got for you Tudors by uh, the family story by Leanda DeLeo now Leanda DeLeo is always always the author that is recommended when you're talking about the, the English monarchy and her writing is just amazing. And if you like shows like The Crown, baby, this is the book for you. I love the Tudors. I love anything to do with monarchies in general. I find them fascinating. And this book will not disappoint. It doesn't read like a textbook. It reads like a story. Like I almost forgot for a second there that these were real people. So if you like The Crown, if you like Downtown Abbey, if you like, what's the other one? Call the Midwife or those kind of historical things. Do yourself a favor and pick up Leanne Delis' book because you will not be disappointed. I can't talk too much about this one because I am not done with it. I am about 150 pages in. So uh, yeah, uh, when I finish with it, I will let you know more in my, I believe it will be my May wrap up. But I have read Witches, James First and the Witch, uh, an English Witch Hunt by Tracy Borman. Now this book does read a little bit more like a textbook, but I found it so fascinating that I didn't care. And if you love the history of like the Salem witch trials and stuff like that. This is the book for you. This book discusses without embellishing what happens and why things happen. And also it talks a lot about James the first and about why he was dead set on hunting witches, which is something that I find fascinating. It also discusses the whole idea of how this was actually not even thought of as not real. No, witches were 100% real to these people, okay? And they also talk about cunning folk and it discusses the why the witch hunts were perpetrated. Like what happened? What was going on in history that we suddenly decided that we needed to hang people for witchcraft? Like what happened? And this book discusses it. There is one line on this book that is very controversial. I explained it in my 24 hour readathon vlog, which I will link up in the cards and down below and everything. But if you're interested in the Salem witch trials, which this book is not about, but if you're interested in that kind of stuff, this book is definitely one that you will enjoy as a nonfiction read. All right. I, I will say though that there are parts of this book that get a little bit bogged down by the by the academic writing of it all. This video actually turned out real different from what I had envisioned. I had envisioned that I was just going to recommend two or three books, but honestly, I am so passionate now about nonfiction writing that I wanted to bring to you all of the nonfiction books that I have been reading lately. I have many more coming in. Most of them are going to be along the same lines, 
But what I want you to know is just like with, uh, I am doing like this because a lot of my classics are here. Like with classics, go into it with an open mind. Go into it thinking that this is a story because it is a story. And the most amazing thing is that it's stories that really happen. That brings such a, that touches a nerve inside of people like the idea that these people exist or these people existed that these things exist or existed that touches something within you that i feel is different from fiction writing where of course it's it's equally as beautiful and wonderful but that's the thing it's equally as beautiful and wonderful it's not that it's one is above the other or one is blah 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 no it's equally as interesting and that's what i want you to take away from this just like i am passionate and they, and and i and i like rant and go on and love on other books like fiction books i do the same with non-fiction books because they're incredible and i feel that maybe a, not a lot of booktubers talk about them no a lot of booktubers talk about them but not as much as fiction writing i know that if you love fantasy, you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to read these things because they don't talk about fantasy. But what you will find with a lot of historical books is that, remember alchemy at one point was a real science. And there is a, a great line out there that says that for every science we have a pseudoscience for every astronomer we have an astrologer for every chemist we have an alchemist and so on that's actually from solaris from stanislav lem so i just think i want to share my love of nonfiction with you guys and um hopefully inspire you to pick up a nonfiction book and maybe find a new favorite <laughs> This video has gotten long enough. I really, I hope that I got my points through. I, I, I never like know how videos are going to turn out, but I feel that this video turned out okay. I think. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below if I have inspired you to pick up a nonfiction, if you're still 100% against nonfiction, or anything you want to share with me. It really makes me so happy when you guys comment in my videos and also give it a like subscribe you know the drill and just as a reminder i post every monday wednesday and fridays and sometimes if i'm feeling a little saucy i'll post on tuesdays and thursdays too but never on saturday and sunday because your girl needs to rest with that said thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye guys <laughs> oh guys look can you see let me see if this will focus. I'm wearing Totoro earrings. And I think I always wear them when it's spring. Because even though spring is fuck you weather season, it's still great to see the flowers coming back and, you know, everything that comes with spring. So, Totoro earrings it is now. <laughs> Alright, talk to you later. Bye!